previously at Chester Zoo. There were dramatic scenes at the Asian Elephant House when bull elephant Upperly was first introduced to the zoo's newest young female, Burma. She's really got to give in to him completely. Today, headkeeper Mick gives him a second chance. But Upperly's idea of elephant romance still leaves a lot to be desired. Nothing like uh, the Savoy and champagne and roses now. Bag of chips and a, and a, a can of iron brew is, is our Upperly. And in the reptile house, headkeeper Isolde has her hands full with another dangerous liaison. My heart's going a bit at the moment. It tends to be a bit of an adrenaline rush the first time you go in there because uh, you don't know how they're going to react. It's bright and early at Chester Zoo, and at the elephant enclosure, headkeeper Mick Jones is a man on a mission. Over the last six months, Mick and his team have been carefully introducing their newest female elephant, Burma, to resident bull Upperly in the hope of a successful mating. This morning, Mick and the team are set to try again. The same process okay. as last time. We've got pe people stationed around the uh, exhibit and we're going to let him out in a second. Yes, sir, it's OK. She's coming this way now. OK, when you're ready, clear to open the, uh, the bullpen gate, please. Over. She's anticipating what's about to happen. We don't want her in there. We really don't want them in there. These are tense moments. Burma tries to get away from Upperly and puts herself in a vulnerable position next to the elephant house. She backed up into a corner if it still all kicks off. Too many corners. She's got a pen against the door. Today he's pushing her arm, not too serious at the moment. OK, thanks. Look up there, over. He knows he's dominated her. Upperly forces Burma down to the ground. If she continues to resist him, she could be seriously hurt. She's just flopping down and, and he's pushing her around, so she winds him up. When there's a barrier between them, she, she attacks him and winds him up. And it's quite, quite different when the barrier's gone, of course. Come, on, come out of there, then. Soppy ape <laughs> Burma finally sees her opportunity to escape and makes a run for it. It's natural elephant behaviour. That's what we've been trying to encourage, sir. It's what, what we're here to, uh, to achieve, is see elephants behaving like real elephants. Yeah, there's, there's, there, are, there are things to worry about. It's just that she never... That she, that she doesn't doesn't actually get on with him at all, and then that's that's a big worry because uh, she she then doesn't have a role within the herd. We're a breeding herd, so we really need for her to to be in a position to breed. And uh, if she doesn't get on with him at all or refuses to accept him, then uh, we've got to think what we do. Later on, there's more for Mick to worry about as Upperly refuses to take no for an answer. It's always nerve-wracking, and if you were to see this for the first time, you would think, ooh, I don't want to put animals through this.
Nearby, head keeper Chas McKenzie and senior keeper Helen Massey are on their way to the tapir house. They're checking up on one of Chester Zoo's youngest residents, a two-week-old tapir called Shadow. Well, we're just going to give uh, a once-over the, the wee baby tapir, Shadow. Uh, on the way it, so what we need to do is get the adults out of the way so we can do that because it uh, could be a bit iffy if uh, mum sees us picking the youngster up. Food's a, a, good, a good pacifier. If you can occupy them with food, it gives us a chance to get in, weigh it, make sure it's all right, and they won't know any different. Hopefully Helen is going to rattle the bucket with food and adults come out. <laughs> if that doesn't work, on, I don't know. We'll have to go for a plan B. <laughs> Come on, then. Come on, Zach. True to form, the food does the trick. Good boy. Come on, Cozzy. Yeah. Come on. Good lad. After 35 years in the job, Charles has weighing baby tapirs down to a fine art. This is very technical. This is a set of bathroom scales. You know, it's ultimate you know, weighing apparatus we have at the zoo. Um, dead simple, isn't it? You just pick baby up, stand on it, and then you stand on it, and then take your weight off, and you've got the weight of the baby. Stop kicking. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. 87. I did it a different way than this one. Sixty-seven. That's the steel toe cap boots there, haven't they? Uh, oh yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yes, that's twenty k then. Is it sixty-seven? Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, chunky baby. Chunky. Well fed. Come on then. Jenny, the mum, is anxious to have her baby back. Chaz reassures her that everything is okay. Nothing wrong, eh? Mum's just given her a, a once-over because all the smells on the. Nothing strange, is there? Chaz will be back to check on the baby later in the day. Nothing wrong, eh? At Chester Zoo's Realm of the Red Ape, the Sumatran orangutans are making the most of the good weather. Senior keeper Chris Yarwood is on his way to visit four of their distant cousins, the Bornean orangutans. One of them, an adult male called Tuan, arrived at Chester from Belgium last year. He's just out of quarantine and will soon be introduced to the zoo's three females in the hope that they will breed. Two and, you know, has had, had female company before. Um, and hopefully he'll, our, our three girls will catch his eye and he'll be OK. And he's, uh, he's quite a sweet old boy. Orangutans are very much the individuals, um, just, just like people. So you can, get, you can get outgoing orangutans, you can get shy orangutans. And then amongst each other, you can get, you might get two orangutans that will be very loving towards one another and um, walk around all day sort of together. And on the other hand, you, at the other end of the spectrum, you can get two orangutans that absolutely hate each other and, uh, and aren't happy to share the same space. The, the only time that they'll, they'll really interact with, with others on a regular basis is relations. So, and the only um, stable grouping is mothers and offspring. I think so sometimes, because, because orangutans are just so intelligent, they, they'll, they'll, they'll do things out of sheer devilment. And, and they know when they're, when they're doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. I, I, I work with all, all the primates at the zoo. It's the orangutans that make me happiest. To, to me, they're the, uh, the real magical ones. Chris will introduce the new boy, Tuan, to his girlfriends in a few days. 
At Chester Zoo's Islands in Danger exhibit, the nerves are showing as the reptile team prepare for an important event. The time has come to give Norman, the male Komodo dragon, his first physical contact with Nessie, the female. Norman arrived at Chester nearly six months ago from Rotterdam Zoo. His Dutch keeper came over to help him settle in. And head keeper Isolde McGeorge had high hopes he would father offspring with Chester's two females. Oh, look at that. He's handsome and he's sweet. And he's I think he will be looking. very nice with the ladies. But the keepers and vets were concerned that Norman might have trouble keeping up with his girlfriends. He seemed to have a neurological problem that made his walking clumsy. This left foot yeah. just literally goes up and down, up and down, trying to get it onto the rock. Vets prescribed more exercise to help tackle the problem. But they couldn't tell whether Norman would ever be nimble enough to catch a mate. Hello, Nessie lovey. A few days ago, Norman and Nessie were given their first sight of each other, but without direct contact. His oldest hopes were dashed by Norman's total lack of interest. I think I might have expected a little bit more from Norman, seeing as he hasn't seen a woman in such a long time, but there you go, that's meant for you. Maybe he's forgotten what to do now. But when they get physical contact, maybe that's all going to change. This morning, the physical contact will happen for the first time. As the moment approaches, the team are on edge. Mixing Komodo dragons is always unpredictable. They're powerful animals with sharp teeth, and if they don't like each other, there's the potential for life-threatening injuries. My heart's going a bit at the moment. <laughs> it tends to be a bit of an adrenaline rush the first time you go in there because uh, you don't know how they're going to react. We've done this before, we've done it plenty of times before. We're used to this scenario, but we're using a different male this time, so... Just keep our fingers crossed, really. Calm before the storm. Senior keeper Matt Swapman is on standby with a fire extinguisher. Should things go horribly, horribly wrong, uh, we use the fire extinguisher to shock him, basically. Come on. She's coming through. I've got a strange feeling about this today. I don't know why. She puffed her throat out. She has, yeah. What's she going to do? Get in position with your extinguisher. We might need it. Isolde and her team stand by with baffle boards in case they have to intervene and split them up. But it turns out that all Nessie wants to do is get away from Norman. She's going higher. Yeah, she might. She's unscathed by her fall, but his older thinks it will change her tactics. She might, after that fall, she might have decided that it's not worth trying to climb up again. And she got a good view of him there if she just looks over the top. While Nessie regains her composure, Norman heads away from her instead of towards her. You're going the wrong way. No, he's playing cool. <laughs> Play cool. <laughs> got a bottle of champagne and some chocolate stashed in. She's probably thinking, hey, this isn't right. He's supposed to be chasing me. <laughs> What's going on? Try putting some Barry White on. <laughs> I think that'll do the trick. After a faltering start, Norman finally gets the message. And the chase is on. Cameron's there as well. If Norman can catch her, there's a good chance she'll allow him to mate with her. She slowed down for him now to give him a chance to catch up. Go on, Norman. She's giving you the old. <laughs> Come on. Right, giving him a signal. Yeah. <laughs> it was only three laps. <laughs> <laughs> you never think of it from the old perspective, do you? <laughs> <laughs> He's just run a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 
that's because she's exceptionally fit and he's... <laughs> he wants to cuddle he now. A, he hasn't done a good workout in some time. Let's do it reverse. Yeah. After three laps in hot pursuit, Norman's lack of fitness shows. Poor lad, he's exhausted. OK, open the slide, Karen. His older decides to call it a day. I guess you always hope for a little bit more, but it was good. Nobody got damaged in the process. Um, we're all in one piece, and uh, he didn't do any harm to her. So, yeah, I'm happy with how that went. Isolde will try pairing them up again soon. Later on, Burma the elephant is still playing hard to get, but her boyfriend isn't easily put off. Well, he, he's trying to dominate her now. In the meerkat enclosure, senior keeper Mark Cleave is serving up a special treat, hard-boiled eggs. I'm not going to give him many because we like to split them over a couple of days. I've got six meerkats in there, so I'm going to give him three eggs. In the wild, meerkats live off insects, lizards and small mammals. Though eggs are always a welcome addition to their diet. Yeah, look, it's found the egg now already. Quite agile, aren't they? Once one has to go, they'll all start saying, no, I want some of this. The family of six normally get on well, except where their food's concerned. Here we are, he's protecting it now. That meerkat got the egg open and he's thinking, well, you're not going to have the goodies inside. So that's what he does is he'll pull it closer and he'll turn his back side on like that, take a few bites and protect it. You know, I watch him protect it now, he'll put his body around it. Quite good at taking the shell off. With leaving the shells on, they have to work for the food, they have to use the mine, they have to use the claws, they have to be clever enough to somehow break the shell. Then, in a split second, they all scatter, fearing attack by a predatory hawk or an eagle. We just spotted that plane up there. Can you hear him going? That's the alarm call, they're all watching it now. Oh, no one's popped his head up. The slightest thing in the air, slightest shadow, they're gone. Once the perceived danger has passed, a sentry stands guard while the others eat up. As you can see now, it's nearly finished. Eh? But we can't give them too many uh, treats as activities because uh, obviously they'll, they'll get fat. She doesn't want anything to do with it, does she? Back at the elephant enclosure, Burma, the female, is still doing her best to escape the unwanted advances of Chester's bull elephant, Upperly. His way with the ladies is not exactly subtle. He's a lot of a goer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He hasn't had a chance to prove it yet, but uh, he's, he's a good boy. He's a, he's a, he's a proper boy. Yeah. His approach to girls, to the girls, is a little less... Re it's not quite as refined as it perhaps should be. Nothing like uh, the Savoy and champagne and roses now. Bag of chips and a, and a, a can of iron brew is, is our upperly. He continues to try to overpower Burma with his four and a half tons of body weight. If she doesn't give in soon, she could be seriously hurt. It's always nerve-wracking, and if you were to see this for the first time, uh, you would think, ooh, I don't want to put animals through this, but when you see little animals like Raman, you, that, that really reassures you that it's the right thing. Upperly appears to be getting increasingly frustrated and impatient. Well, he, he's trying to dominate her now, uh, putting her in a position that he can mount her, not necessarily mate her at this stage, uh, although that might happen. I, th I think it's just a matter of time now. We've just got to keep, 
keep this going so uh, so she eventually will stand still and not mind it at all. But she's not moving too far away from him now, so she's uh, almost prepared to uh, to submit. All in all, Mick is pleased with the way it's gone. I would say that's a great success. Huh? Everything will be okay. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really very happy. Mick will put the two elephants together again when Burma comes into season, in the hope that Upperley will finish what he started. Next time, has Loya the bear been taking liberties? She's living the life of Riley at the moment, and she's loving it. Zach the tapir needs some running repairs to his sore chin. What was starting to happen is that it's starting to seal up under the skin. So we're just going to explore a little bit. And Headkeeper Isolde has an emergency on her hands when Norman the Komodo dragon turns nasty. Reptiles 1 to Reptiles 2. Could you come over to Islands in Danger as quickly as possible, please? Over.